is our first game in Columbus, Ohio. So we are so excited about having the opportunity and just bringing athletes from all over the country to play. We were able to put up this one day clinic um, where we had a practice in the morning for a few hours, just getting the athletes who have play played before, um, just oriented, knowing some new skills, learning a little bit more in depth about the game. Start moving your arms. And then we were able to play a game today. So it was super exciting. Welcome USA Red and USA Blue. That was a fun game. That was awesome. I mean, it was a tough draw. We had, uh, we ended up nil-nil. I think both teams fought really, really well. But we did a great job. It was a great game. It was a real good game. Real competitive. This was an incredible experience, and I'm honored that I was uh, able to be part of it. The game is 40 minutes long, and you're running that entire time, so you really need to be working out and conditioning in, in you know, the times that you're not playing so that you will be ready when you are playing. One water thing on each side, and then they Katie Smith came on board with our therapeutic recreation program with Columbus Recreation and Parks and uh, brought this new sport in and, you know, got recruited, got everybody involved, uh, is involved in the, with USABA at the national level. I came to Columbus working through Columbus Rec and Parks and Therapeutic Rec and found there were no opportunities for individuals with visual impairments. So I decided to really connect with the community here and found out about blind soccer through United States Association of Blind Athletes. And they had a camp in Maryland. So I went, attended, heard all about blind soccer and um, decided to bring that here to Columbus. I uh, found out about blind soccer. Um, Katie Smith, the person who put this clinic on today, um, and she's the one who got me involved with blind soccer. I also play blind hockey and go downhill skiing. Katie Smith, my blind soccer coach, organized an event in October of 2018 for Blind Sports Month. Uh, that it was an exhibition where you could come out and learn about blind soccer. I'm very glad I did because I was hooked from the very beginning and I've played ever since then, so a little over three years now. And since we started in 2018, we have just grown our um, blind soccer team. Um, we are continuing to do it. It's the Ohio Blind Soccer uh, program here in Columbus. I'm just so excited that it's here. I mean, uh, anytime we can bring something new to Columbus and, and make it happen and, and within the community for people with disabilities, we're all in. So. In the blind soccer game, there are rules differences that referees need to be able to enforce versus the sighted game that has a lot more open, they're easier to define. Uh, some of the rule differences, the goalkeeper only having a little bit of space to be able to pick up the ball, and some of the ways that they cluster, you're watching for a little more hands and understanding that they're not doing anything on purpose as far as running around and, and maybe putting their arms out, whereas in a sighted game, this would be potentially a foul. This is them making sure that they're staying safe. So I like the challenge because we're all blindfolded, so we all have like the same amount of vision, which is nothing. And so it's really testing your communication skills of being able to communicate with your team members and other the other opponent uh, team to make sure that like you guys don't run into each other, but also get the ball. And I think it's just super challenging, but it's really fun because I'm super athletic. I would say communication is also a very large part of it because you have three other teammates on the field with you in addition to your coaches and your goaltender. And all of you need to be communicating because when you're running, you need to keep your positions. You need to know what everybody is doing so that you can work in a cohesive manner down the field and try and score when you're on offense and try and defend when you're on defense. And then it just gets down to the soccer skills themselves, like dribbling. If you can't dribble, you're not going to get very far in this game. But then of course, you also need to learn how to pass and to shoot. Honestly, I'm a professional track athlete and I cross train with soccer too at the same time. It's a good kind of a crossover. That's how I keep in shape, you know, um, working on ball mastery as well as uh, cardio fitness. For me, um, I kind of do more at home things. I do a lot of stuff in my backyard. I go on a lot of different YouTube channels for soccer fitness and I do a lot of their drills, a lot of their cardio stuff. 
I'm very happy that this clinic is here in Columbus, that we had all these great athletes come out from all over the place. So I probably will be in season for track, but hopefully I can come and uh, participate in some other camps because this was a blast. We are going to continue to grow our program and then throughout the whole country, we are really growing it from the grassroots level. So we are going to all the schools for the blind. There will be um, a lot more clinics throughout the country um, alongside USABA. So it'll be, it'll be great for us to grow the sport and we're hoping to go to the Paralympics in 2028. That is the end goal of this. So I'm excited to be a part of that and hope to see where that leads. I'm also hoping to be in the uh, running for the Paralympic team for the US in a couple years here in the 2028 games. So. Honestly, let's get out here and um, get serious. One thing too, because um, us as USA athletes, you know, building up towards Los Angeles and future competitions. I'm, I'm going to continue to be motivated and work out, stay in shape, lay off the donuts, run the extra mile, you know. We want to be competitive. Of course, we want to have fun. This is a fun game and we did enjoy what we did today, but at the same time, you know, we are competitive and we want to be up there with the top dogs and we want to be the top dogs, right Cody? Yeah. I encourage anyone who's blind or visually impaired to come on out and try it. Um, it's a challenge but it really is fun and that's all, that, that's the most important part is just to have fun and challenge yourself and I think anyone can do it if you set your mind to it. Keeping at it because this is an excellent sport and I'm, I'm very passionate about it and I'm trying to grow the game and get more people involved. If anyone in Columbus is interested in getting to know more about blind soccer or blind sports, they can contact myself. Um, number is 513-460-9785. The best advice I ever got was forget being afraid. If you're afraid of a failure or of looking foolish or you know, even just getting hurt, and you let that stop you, you're never going to be able to achieve anything. You have to get over being afraid as a blind person and doubly so as a blind athlete. So if you are interested in this and you want to start as a blind soccer player or a blind track star or bull ball or whatever, stop being afraid and just go do it. Facts. You just have to. Let's get serious. If you're interested in becoming involved in what we're doing with our sports and recreation for people with disabilities, find information about our program on our website, www.columbusrecparks.com. And we're under the wellness portion. Just click on therapeutic recreation and you'll see everything you need to know. If you know someone who's blind, definitely get them involved because we'd love to have you.